Arizonans and everybody um, throughout the whole country really is eating way too much salt. Um, the fact is uh, Arizonans are eating about twice the amount of salt that they should be eating. Um, the average Arizona uh, adult male is eating about 10 grams of salt a day. Women are averaging at about seven and a half grams of salt a day. We think that we can cut that back significantly over the next uh, few years by educating folks about how to make better decisions about what they buy in the grocery store, how to cook better, um, and those sorts of things. And, and, and to give you a flavor for um, what this really means in terms of a public health equivalent, um, if, if we were able to knock back 30%, the amount of salt that folks eat here in Arizona by 30%, it would be the public health equivalent of getting half of Arizona smokers to quit cold turkey today. So think about that. We could save as many people by cutting back by 30% on what people eat in terms of sodium every, every day. Um, we could cut the, the public health equivalent to that intervention is equal to getting half of Arizona smokers to stop immediately. Think about that. That's a huge, I mean, that's a, that's a compelling um, statistics. And I, and I think, that that's the kind of thing um, that will motivate folks uh, to make better choices for their family, knowing that by cutting back um, on, on what they buy, in terms of sodium on the label, that there's better choices that they could make that are going to save their families, save your life, so that you be there for your grandkids. That's, a, that's something that will motivate people to make this change. And it's not complicated. It's not hard to do. It's pretty easy to do. Um, so I wanted to do a little demonstration before we get into some some of the other discussions. So this this is ba this is the amount of salt that the average Arizonan eats. I'm going to pour it out so you can get a get a feel for how much salt people are eating here in Arizona in 2010. Keep going. Look at that. Not even done yet. So look at that pile. That's the amount of salt that the average Arizonan eats in a year. Most of it is coming from processed foods. Initially, folks think, well, you know, I don't use much salt from the salt shaker, so I'm okay. Well, you're not okay because 80% of the salt that you're getting um, is coming from processed foods. So what's the solution? You know, for a long time, folks have thought, well, you know, it's in the food already, it's too hard, I can't make the decisions, it's too hard, I don't have enough time in the day. But the fact is, it's not hard to do, and we're gonna go over some, some demonstrations about how to read the label and how to do your consumer shopping when you're deciding what products to buy. But basically, what we're trying to do over the next year is take this pile that you see here, which is the average amount of salt that the average Arizona eats um, throughout the year, and we're gonna to try to do this to it. We want to cut about 30% of that off. We're not saying we want to cut the salt completely, but we think by folks making better decisions about what they buy in the grocery store, by reading the labels and cutting back on the amount of sodium that they're buying and feeding to their family, that they, that they can reduce that much sodium out of, out of their diet over the course of a year and save thousands of lives here in Arizona. And I'm a registered dietitian here at the Arizona Department of Health Services within the Bureau of Nutrition and Physical Activity. So my role here is kind of helping you navigate through this daunting uh, food label, which I know can be very, very confusing and tricky for consumers. So most importantly, when it comes to cutting back on your sodium intake, there's really four things that you're looking at on the food label. You're looking at the serving size, then the number of servings per container, then you're also looking at the sodium amount, and then your daily value. So we have two makeshift soups up here. And if you take a look at this, let's look at the first one, which is in green, you're gonna see that the sodium amount is 940 milligrams. So as Will said, the goal is to try to keep your sodium intake below 2,300 milligrams a day. If you're an at-risk population, you wanna keep it beneath 1,500 milligrams a day. However, most of us could easily consume the entire can of soup. So if we did that, we're already well over the amount of sodium that we should be intaking for the day with this one here. Now the second one is better. If you look at the daily value, you're at about 20% of your daily value. But again, that's per serving. You have two and a half servings per container. So that already, if you're an at-risk population, that's already putting you pretty close to how much you should be consuming for the entire day. 
Um, really, for a product to be labeled low sodium, you're looking at less than 140 milligrams per serving. So the options are quite simple. If you're afraid of the food label, if you're afraid of the numbers, and that's just too much for you to handle, it's still very easy to do this. It's consuming more fresh fruits and vegetables, more whole grains, bran products. And luckily, we're in Arizona, where we're a state that's rich in agriculture. We have farmer's markets. So you can go to your farmer's markets and get plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. Thank you very much. So my name is Taben Hale, T-A-B-E-N-H-A-L-E. I'm a, a PhD and a researcher at, uh, assistant professor at the University of Arizona College of Medicine in Phoenix in partnership with Arizona State University in the Department of Basic Medical Sciences. And so my research has focused on uh, the control of high blood pressure or hypertension and hypertension related diseases. And I think one of the most important things we should take home is those uh, individuals who are taking, who are already taking medications to control, control their blood pressure are not off the hook when it comes to uh, controlling their sodium intake. And in fact, research both experimentally and clinically has demonstrated in particular those individuals who are taking uh, drugs um, such as ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. These individuals have a better control of their blood pressure, so a lowering of their blood pressure in the face of a low sodium diet. So when you're taking these medications, it's important to maintain a low sodium diet. You'll get a better control of your blood pressure, uh, which will, in the long term, uh, may require fewer medications to control your blood pressure or a lower dose of these drugs. High blood pressure is the leading risk factor for cardiovascular diseases in general. And unfortunately, high blood pressure is often symptomless. And so we often don't realize we have high blood pressure until the doctor tells us or until we have a heart attack. So it, it will have to be consumer driven to understand we need to lower our sodium, we need to make better lifestyle choices to help us live longer. And also to pass that information on to our children uh, so we don't have young children developing um, early signs of cardiovascular disease at a younger age, as we're seeing with obesity. Uh, one, of, one of the things that we haven't discussed yet really today is what does it actually cost society in terms of extra medical care uh, because of the amount of salt that folks are eating here in Arizona? And it, it, there's some pretty astonishing numbers here that every year in Arizona, uh, we spend between 200 and 400 million dollars that we don't need to spend um, on controlling blood pressure and the consequences of uh, that come from eating too much salt. So think about that: between 200 and 400 million dollars in extra medical costs um, that, that we're confronted with every year. When in reality, if we were able to reduce that, the amount of salt that folks eat every year, we we could avoid. Some, not, not all those expenses, but some of those expenses. So, um, so this is a simple, easy thing to do, and it makes economic sense, not just um, sense in terms of uh, public health. So uh, we've got a couple of things that I'd like to share with you. Um, one is that up on our eatwellbewell.org website, which is set up to help people make better decisions about what they buy. It also has uh, helpful hints about um, how to make your family more physically active, how to get your family to eat better food choices in terms of uh, fat content and so forth. Um, so I encourage everybody who's struggling with how am I going to get this thing done to go to eatwellbewell.org where there's a lot of resources that are available. And it's, it, it's, we've got uh, three different components, that, uh, and there's, some of those components are for, for, for parents um, and some of those are for kids. So. For those of you that were looking for an interesting topic for your kids, or if you're a school teacher and you want to cover nutrition, you can go to eatwellbewell.org, and it's got interesting information for you to cover in the classroom, but also in the home. Um, is that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there any other questions? Well, beyond the website and beyond today's news conference, what are you all doing to try and reach out to people to get this message across? It's really a grassroots effort where we're starting with the consumers um, and educating them because we can say lower your sodium, but if they don't know why it's meaningful or how to do that, then it's, it's not going to make a difference. So if we feel if we can start with the consumer and educate them on the importance of this, then this will eventually drive um, a public health shift and change that will hopefully change the manufacturers, the way they market and produce the foods as well. 
But I mean, how are you doing that? I mean, are you going to send out mailers? Are you going to put PSAs on TV? How are you going to reach out to this place? You can go to acdhs.gov backslash salt, and you can go to the website there, and the consumers can take a pledge, and this is what Will was pointing out earlier, and they can sign up also for email alerts where they'll get healthy recipes, low-sodium recipes, and take the pledge to follow us and follow the healthy recipes and make healthier lifestyle changes for their families. I think we all um, like the taste of the food as it is right now, but I think what's more meaningful is when you realize what a health threat it is to you and especially to your family. And so the messages that we can convey are going to reflect changes for the average person, but also for our children as well, because there's multifactorial approach to this and to nutrition in general. So what's most meaningful is when you want to live a healthy lifestyle for your family and you realize that if you don't, this is going to shorten my life and my children's life, that's kind of the end point of what we're saying. We do have uh, some funding available through our Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, better known as uh, food stamps, and we have an educational grant uh, out there from the USDA that's designed to help consumers, especially folks that are enrolled in the, in the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or, or food stamps, to make better choices um, with, 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 the, with the coupons and, and, and so forth that they get from the federal government. So. We're going to be moving in the direction through that SNAP program to start uh, really focusing attention on folks that receive the SNAP benefits to make better choices. Now, um, you know, there is some crossover between folks that are enrolled in the SNAP program and the general folks in Arizona. And, and I think what we're trying to do is to capitalize on that linkage between uh, the programs that we have in the SNAP program, which is really focused on uh, families, as I said, that receive those SNAP benefits. Um, but in general, everybody in, in Arizona can benefit from making these better decisions. And so what we're really doing this year, right now is kicking off this year-long campaign, which is multifactorial, like she said. It's involved in uh, setting up the website. It's proactive uh, involvement through sending out email alerts to people who sign up. It's working with schools, especially kids and uh, the teachers in elementary schools, to help them get resources into the classroom to educate kids because there's no better teacher to a parent um, than a kid coming home from school saying, look at mommy, this look at the label on this. There's too much sodium in here. I'm worried about your and daddy's health. Those are compelling things in families. So it's really a broad-based effort in terms of educating folks within the SNAP program, but also getting out there into the schools so that, uh, so that kids can learn about nutrition labeling and bring that information home. But ultimately, the bottom line, I think is what you were getting at is, ultimately, it takes motivation uh, by an individual family member who makes the purchases and does the cooking for their family to make those proactive decisions to help improve their family's diet, not just with sodium, but with everything that they buy. And so, um, you know, I mean, one of the things we're doing here is trying to be a catalyst to make those decisions uh, happen. In, in a, it, if, if bottom line is, look at it this way. In the history of public health, there were lots of public health interventions um, that were top down, that really made a huge impact on society. Take, for example, the vaccination programs, cleaning up uh, water, uh, sewage disposal, environmental regulations, in, in, including air quality and so forth. We've made a lot of progress over the last 30 years in public health. But uh, the bottom line is, we're reaching that threshold where people have to take action themselves to really have additional public health improvements because we can't make people eat better. We can provide information for folks to make better decisions. We can make it easier for them to eat better, but ultimately what people buy is up to them. Most people wanna have a healthy diet. Most people wanna make sure that they're buying the right things, but most people also don't know what that is. And so, um, this year-long effort really is about trying to make it easier for families to make better decisions about what they buy, and it'll pay dividends in their family's health. Well, what do you think about um, fast food companies, one in particular, um, that is offering or advertising a diet menu? Well, you know, when it comes to fast foods, um, you know, um, I'm a parent of middle schoolers, so I'm guilty, <laughs> as anybody, of going through the drive through on on fast food places. And the bottom line is, you know, every so often it's it's okay. Um, but really, if you're gonna have a healthy diet, and if you're gonna get your kids healthier foods, it's really something that should be minimized. The bottom line is, you know, if you're concerned and you should be 
about what you're eating, both with the fat content, um, the nutritional content, and reducing sodium. The bottom line is, you know, if you're going to go to a fast food place, go to some place that actually has the nutrition facts available. If they don't have nutrition facts available, then you don't know what you're eating. Um, if they've got nutrition facts, at least you can make an informed decision about what the kids can buy on the menu and whether you're going to come back the next time. So, um, so, so really, I don't want to make fast food into it like the culprit here, uh, but it shouldn't be a staple for your family. Um, and, uh, you know, if you go into a fast food place, ask for the nutrition facts. I mean, one of the things we're trying to do here is to push processors and, and, and folks who run establishments like food, uh, fast food places to pay more attention to consumers. Now, in order to do that, we've got to make, we've got to motivate consumers into making that happen. And so that's really essentially a, a grassroots campaign, a, a grassroots revolution, if you will, that needs to start with consumers. Because if consumers don't change, industry's not going to change. Um, and so, you know, so that's what we're trying to do here. Okay. I guess we can call her out.